Oh, one second. It is 11 o'clock. However, I forgot that I, let me, yep, there we go. Okay, there. Sorry about that. Hello there. My name is Quentin Russell, and I am the content marketing specialist here at Doc365. It is 11 a.m., which is, means we are going to get started with today's webinar. Um, I would like to apologize for not, for the, us having to cancel last week's webinar. I unfortunately came down with a case of coronavirus. And while I didn't almost die, uh, it was not the most comfortable week of my life. So I appreciate, uh, you know, having that week off and everything. But going forward, there shouldn't be any interruptions in Doc's webinar schedule going forward. So today we will be covering how SharePoint modernizes contract management. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we are going to be covering the effects of outdated contract management. So basically inefficiencies in the process and the old ways of managing contracts that are probably harming your company, or if they're not harming your company, they're still providing a major inconvenience for people involved in your contract management processes. After that, we're going to take a look at how SharePoint modernizes contract management. So we're going to take a look at what SharePoint does for contract management and why it's so effective at taking all of your outdated processes and building something better. Uh, after that, we will be taking a look at how Share, um, different ways that you can use SharePoint to really maximize contract management. As part of that, we'll be taking you on a quick high level overview of doc contract management. That is our contract management system that we build within SharePoint. Um, so like as opposed to custom programming, building out a massive new tool that you have to have a ton of new logins for and you know, throwing everything at you. We instead take your Office 365 tenant and use that to build out a fully functional, powerful contract management system. Um, like I said, we're only going to be doing a high level overview of that. If you'd like a more in-depth uh, look at that after the webinar, feel free to schedule a free demo with us. Um, just head on over to our website, uh, go to mydoc365.com. There you will find uh, under our products tab, our contract management system or any of our other SharePoint based productivity solutions. So feel free to take a look at that. Uh, finally, at the end of the webinar, we will be doing a full question and answer session. So the way I want that to go is that throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to type them out in the chat. Uh, at the end, I will go through those questions and make sure to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, if there is anything I cannot answer at that time, I will do some research, find out what I need to find out, and include it in the email that I will be sending towards the end of the day. Uh, that will include a recording of today's webinar. So... Before we begin, I'd like to talk briefly about Doc365, who we are, what we do, that sort of thing. So we're a company located in Jacksonville, Florida. We have about 17 to 18 years at this point of, uh, we yeah, so about 18 years of experience working with SharePoint to deliver exceptional productivity solutions. Uh, we work with a wide range of companies in a variety of different industries to implement a diverse array of SharePoint productivity tools. So these include internet portals, contract management systems, CRM solutions. Uh, we do safety, risk, compliance management. Uh, we also offer, uh, let's see, board man meeting management. Uh, really just anything that can help your business do what you're doing, but better and more efficiently and effectively. Uh, that's because our vision is to break down silos and build stronger employee engagement across your organization. Because the sad truth is, is that as um, employees gather information, as they get experience, 
um, oftentimes they just kind of keep it to themselves. They don't share everything they know with each other. So you have these groups of people who have, um, you know, individually, they have a ton of information that could be useful for your organization. Um, and these are useful and, you know, great knowledge to have for different areas, but they might not necessarily, and, you know, so they, oh, and, combining it all together, you have a rich wealth of understanding that everyone in your organization could potentially tap into to really just be productive and engaged by, because they're not sharing that information, because it's so spread out, because your company might not have effective tools to collaborate with one another, you're not able to effectively utilize that. So we like to, not we like to, we, our mission is to provide companies with these tools that can help them bridge those gaps, break down those silos and give everyone at your organization access to all of the information they need to really take their work to the next level. So um, before we begin, I'd also like to talk about our upcoming slate of webinars. So like I said, we'll be doing a webinar every week going forward. Um, last week was a fluke due to me having, you know, the plague. But uh, that said, next week we will be doing the next part of our SharePoint Basics series. We'll be talking about term store management. So how it works, what it is, and how you can effectively utilize it. Uh, the week after that, on February 9th, we'll be taking a look at how internet portals drive engagement. A lot of companies talk, um, you know, they talk big, they say that they do, but they don't exactly explain the mechanics behind it. So I want to break that down, show you exactly how that happens, so there's no real confusion and you can examine these claims with a practiced eye. Um, after that, on February 16th, we'll be doing another SharePoint basic series. This time we'll be talking about governance. So how to build a SharePoint governance plan, what you need to know, what you need to do, and how to build a effective governance plan. Uh, finally, at the end of the month on the 23rd, we'll be taking a look at uh, Office 365 and Google Drive, and we'll be examining the differences, the benefits, the negatives, the pros, cons, all of that, and finally kind of putting to bed whether you should choose Office 365 or Google Drive. So with that said, what is poor contract management? Because a lot of times companies will sit, will talk about it. Um, they'll say, oh, hey, here's the effects, here's the stats and numbers, but they don't put it in a everyday view that people can really relate to and understand. So basically the, the way to sum up poor contract management is it's when your company isn't closely and accurately monitoring a, contact, a contract after it's been signed. Uh, generally this happens once leadership hands off a contract to the people on operations level. So generally what this looks like, it's um, so you have situations where operations might not have access to the contract. So they can't review the terms of it and suddenly they are either go doing too much or not doing enough. Um, it could also be a situation where they have access to the contract, but they don't know where it is. It's stored in someone's email inbox. It's um, stored on a flash drive somewhere. It's been printed out and placed in a filing cabinet, but no one can find it. Uh, you also have situations where operations might be too busy to actively monitor contracts because of the way you're storing them, because you'd have to spend time tracking them down. It's not worth it to go out of your way to find them. Uh, another situation that can come up is when contracts get lost in the handoff from leadership to operations. Um, again, that's a situation where, you know, someone prints it out, puts it in a filing cabinet, no one can find it anymore. Uh, you also have a situation where contracts are completed through a third party procurement department. Uh, so all of the tasks that get assigned to operations are, um, you know, process based. So what you're supposed to be doing at specific times, but it's not an overall scale. Operations doesn't have that top down view so they can see and track whether what they're doing is having an effect and positively contributing to contract management. Um, and then finally, something that we've kind of touched on with each of these points, it's when contracts just aren't stored properly. You're not keeping them in the right place. Someone, they get lost in someone's email. Um, you know, you have five different versions in one folder and no one's sure which one is the latest version. 
all of these can have a major impact and really what they boil down to is human error. Um, at the end of the day, human error is the single biggest problem that comes up in the contract management process. Second. So with that said, um, a recent study from Spring CM found that only 4% of procurement professionals said that uh, human error had never impacted the contract management process. 22% says um, said that about uh, you know it that it impacted the contract management process negatively a large amount of the time because that's the thing uh, people make mistakes and that's why it's uh, basically it's super important that you look for ways that you can reduce these mistakes and um, the effects that they have on the process. Because situations come up where people forget tasks, they overlook small issues that you know, get worse with time. Um, there are spelling and grammar mistakes in a contract that can actually have tangible effects on the contract. People can lose documents, uh, they can miss out on tasks to notify the right people, or they can just miss deadlines in general. All of these are major hiccups in the contract management process and they can cause major issues for your company. Um, some of these issues include underperforming projects. So you have situations where work might not be delivered due to contracts not being closely monitored. You can also have situations where, um, so you know, you have the, your, so that the situation I just listed is when people on your side are failing to deliver on deadlines. But then you also have situations where you're working with a contractor or a third party company who isn't delivering what they're supposed to be delivering. But since you're not monitoring the contract, you don't know that. Um, you know, say they are supposed to be doing a specific task, they promised it, but because you're not, but, um, but since it's not, since it's a minor thing and it's not contributing to the overall scope of the project that they are performing for you, it, you might overlook that, which can be a major issue because you're not getting what you're paying for. Um, another issue that can come up is missing renewals. Uh, if you're not accurately co uh, tracking contracts, then you might not know when a contract is going to expire. So this can cause situations where, um, you know, you're working on something and you're utilizing a tool, the contract for said tool expires, and then suddenly you have a major work interruption. Uh, you also have a situation where you miss out on renewal dates. So some contracts have, uh, um, you know, they, they auto renew. So they say, um, so on a certain date, instead of just completely expiring, they instead re-up and recharge you. Uh, good examples of that are a lot of the, uh, a lot of software tools, uh, Adobe, HubSpot, any of these like major work tools, they have an auto renew clause in their contract. Um, however, you also run into, so, and especially with those situations, and especially if you're, you know, companies like ours, um, if you're using a CRM like HubSpot, if you're using something like Salesforce, um, as you come close to the time to renew said contract, that's actually a prime time for you. If you're monitoring that, you could potentially negotiate discounts. If you've been a good customer, if you know for a fact that, um, you know, they would benefit to have you around and that you would you know you're going to be doing business with them going forward that time before a contract expires or is set to renew you could potentially contact your sales rep contact your representative there in the organization and talk to them about getting discounts but once your money has gone back into their hands you lose out on that opportunity and that's a major opportunity cost which uh you know we'll get to in a second uh, another issue that that can come up and this is the one that people generally think of when it comes to poor contract management is a breach of contract uh, if you're not accurately tracking and managing your contracts, you might run into a situation where you're not delivering on something that you needed to deliver. Um, other people might have deliverables um, that they're not delivering and you're missing out on it, like we said earlier. And with a breach of contract, that can be a major issue where suddenly you have the opportunity to break a contract if you're not happy with someone. But since you're not watching for that, you're stuck paying for a subpar cost until the contract expires. Another situation that can come up. So if your company is in breach of contract, that can lead to you having to shell out a fair amount of money, uh, legal fees, damages, regulatory fines. These are all things that your company really wants to avoid. I, um, I, I really don't think any company wants to go out of their way 
to pay tens of thousands of dollars um, when it can be easily avoided. Uh, going back to what I said about opportunity costs, uh, money spent on underperforming contractors and bad products is a waste of time. If you're not using the product, if your contractor isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing, but they have an auto renew clause in their contract and you're not paying attention, well, suddenly you have another six months to a year of using that. And uh, well, sorry, yeah, better luck next time. You, I, I hope that was a lesson learned. Uh, I sent, um, but not only that, any money and time that you're spent rectifying these issues, making up for failures in the contract management process, uh, dealing with the after effects of poor contract management, well, that's money and time that you could be spent doing other things, investing in other areas of your business in things that will actually make you productive and affect your bottom line. Uh, and the final thing is scope creep. Uh, this is kind of different than everything else. And this is a very much an operations side thing. But if operations doesn't have access to contracts, if they don't know what they're supposed to be doing from a top down level, and they're not really keeping track of this, they might run into situations where they where people start working on more than they're supposed to be doing. Um, and the thing, so you can add extra things to the contract that might not necessarily be there. And because people don't have access to that, the contract, there's no one to really say, well, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Uh, you can have major negative impacts on a project. It can lead to, um, you know, deliverables being given, you know, delivered late or even just missed deadlines and failed projects entirely. So really, it's important that you find a way to avoid poor contract management and really do your best to get um, to modernize your contract management process. So what is modern contract management? Well, pretty simple. Uh, it's essentially, you know, making it so that contracts are super easy to access and monitor. Um, you know, it shouldn't be a whole song and dance and turning over the whole office to find out, to find what you're looking for. Um, and then once you are able to find it, you should be able to track all of the changes that are happening within it. Uh, collaboration and negotiation on contracts should be a breeze. Um, it shouldn't be hard to get the contracts to the other party. It shouldn't be hard for you to work on said contract. It shouldn't have to go back and forth. It shouldn't be, there shouldn't be multiple versions of the contract flying around, going around to different people's emails. It should just be you're, you're working in one document and you can track all of the changes therein. Um, you also need to have quick turnaround. Uh, with the digital age, people having smartphones, everything going faster, 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 you can't afford to have a two month turnaround, two, three, four month turnaround on a contract. Um, you should be, you just need to be signing and going. Um, because frankly, if you're not, you're going to be fall, you're going to fall behind. Um, and then finally, notifications. Very, you know, people, while it's important to be, to be on top of everything and be monitoring, actively monitoring everything. You know, you need backup, notifications, things that will ping you when it's time to do specific things that give you fair warning of when tasks are due, what tasks you're supposed to be doing. You need that. Um, it's important uh, because we're all busy. We're all working on a ton of stuff. I don't know about you, but um, you know, the last year of remote working has caused a severe bleed over in my life. Um, and so now with none of it, and so basically I'm working on a ton of different things and a bunch having a bunch of hands in a bit different pots. And I tell you, if it wasn't for notifications popping up, if it wasn't for things yelling at me, telling me to do, you know, these other things and to take my attention off of this project for a little bit, because it's not due for another six months, as opposed to this one that's due in like two weeks. And, you know, things might not be going as well as they would be, who knows? Uh, so with that said, that's kind of where SharePoint comes in. Um, you know, first of all, there are a lot of tools that could help you modernize contract management. But why SharePoint specifically? Well, first of all, it's convenient. I mean, if you're like us, you're likely already using Office 365. SharePoint comes alongside Office 365 and all of the tools therein. You can, I think you can go jump through a bunch of hoops to get SharePoint specifically, but Office 365 is affordable as it is, so why not? 
Um, Office 365 is in, Office 365 and SharePoint are incredibly user friendly. I mean, if you're anything like me, you've been using Office, you've been using like Microsoft Office products since around the time you started walking. Um, with over 30, 40 years of operation of, of just being in the public conscious, pretty much everyone knows how to use Office products. Um, Office 365 and SharePoint are also incredibly scalable. Um, there are very few other tools and platforms that grow with you like, uh, like SharePoint does. Um, it's super easy, super convenient. Um, not only that, but SharePoint has a ton of different tool integrations that you can use. So you can integrate with social media, you can integrate with things like your CRM if you're using HubSpot or Salesforce. Um, you can integrate your email, you can integrate your phone, anything that you're using, any online digital tool that you're using, you can probably integrate it into Office 365 and SharePoint. Not only that, but uh, you know, SharePoint is highly secure. It's Microsoft. Um, there, as far as I'm aware, uh, Microsoft, I mean, there's probably been several, like there's probably been a few data breaches, but nothing major, nothing that compromises everything. Your information is, is probably more secure in the, uh, you know, the SharePoint cloud servers than anywhere else on the planet, except maybe the specific government uh, storage that uh, Microsoft uses when they work with government entities. Um, not only that, but SharePoint's affordable. I mean, it's really easy to get in there to uh, get a subscription, get a tenant, get started, get going. Um, of course, you know, getting into the finer details, the higher level of SharePoint, uh, you know, that takes a lot more. Uh, you know, that's a time investment, not necessarily a money investment, but we'll kind of talk about that later. So specifically, what about SharePoint modernizes contract management? Well, first of all, SharePoint is second to none in contract management. Um, not contract management, well, I mean, yes, it is second to none, but document storage, I mean. So essentially, uh, the SharePoint document collaboration suite is amazing. Um, it, it's super easy for to generate, edit, manage um, documents within SharePoint. Uh, people can jump into uh, documents pretty easily. They can share them, check them in, check them out. Um, document version control is super amazing because it allows you to see what changes have been made onto a document. And then if there's any changes that have been made that you don't like, that you think aren't worth keeping, you can revert it back to a previous version just like that. Um, kind of talking more on that SharePoint collaboration suite. Um, sharing with people within, uh, you know, with people within your organization is incredibly easy and sharing with people outside your organization is also a complete breeze, um, which makes it great for when you're wanting to collaborate on documents with people, uh, with third parties, be, uh, which is, you know, the entirety of vendor management. Uh, basically what you're doing is you can just say, okay, instead of emailing things back and forth, instead of the latest Microsoft Word document that you're keeping on your computer and keeping in your email inbox, it's, we have this document, it's in this specific location, we're both going to go in and access it, we can see what changes are being made, we can see who's accessing it, we can see everything about it. So we don't have to worry about any sneaky changes because I mean, you are wanting to engage with the third with the other party in good faith. But you know, sometimes there are bad actors and people that you run into who might not necessarily operate in that same good faith. Uh -huh. Next one's major automated workflows. Um, basically, you can build out a whole suite of workflows that can essentially take out a lot of these smaller menial processes that take up your time in the contract management process. And instead, um, basically, the, the system just does it for you. Um, we did do a webinar on workflows several weeks ago, uh, back in 2020. If you want to take a look at that, you can find that on our website, mydoc365.com slash webinars. If you scroll down, you should be able to access the recording on our website. Or if you go to our YouTube channel, you should be able to find that there. Um, but basically, automate. why wouldn't you want to get as much human out of contract management as possible? I mean, I don't know if I told you, but or uh, if I emphasize this enough, but human error is the biggest contract management failure. Um, it's one of the biggest problems in the process. And the more that you can strip that out, the better you are. 
Um, moving on to that search functionality, basically it makes it super easy to find documents within SharePoint. Um, instead of having to scroll through, go through nested files, you can instead just type, um, you know, if you're using metadata and tagging, you can just search for the specific tags and metadata associated with the contract, or you can just search for the name of the contract and it should um, show up pretty easily. And then finally, like I was saying, alerts and notifications. I don't know about you, but SharePoint, uh, I have notifications popping up in my email and on my phone all the time from Office 365. Uh, whether it's my email, whether it's Teams, whether it's, um, you know, tasks that I'm doing within SharePoint itself, there's a lot. Um, and you can build out notifications within SharePoint to the nth degree, you know, three months, six months, two months, one month, whatever you need to let you know when to do tasks and what you need to be doing with those tasks. So, you know, I, I, I hope that gives you a good glimpse at what SharePoint does to, for contract management. Because here's some things that we kind of recommend doing. Uh, these are kind of higher level and really they're a major time investment to get into. So our full, I mean, honestly, my full recommendation is to go to experts for this because it's too, because while these are great and can save you time once you get them running, uh, the time investment it takes to build these is a lot because you have to learn um, how to build everything out, set everything up, um, iron out all of the issues in the process, you know, get rid of any errors. And then once you've done that, you have to test everything. And then once you've tested everything, then you can deploy it. And this can take anywhere from like six months to a year if you are just getting started with SharePoint. Um, but basically, one thing that you can do with SharePoint to really maximize contract management is you can build out templates within SharePoint and use those for your contracts. So instead of having to build, create, uh, you know, tinker with new contracts every time, you can instead just pull if you know that if you have other contracts like within your organization, if it's something that you use on a consistent basis, you just pull that template, uh, throw in the information that you need, fill out the specific fields and you're good to go, which kind of goes into um, guided creation. So using um, questionnaires within Office 365, you can set it up so that you can have your templates um, basically um, guide you through the creation process themselves. So it'll ask you a series of questions and then once you've done that, it'll auto populate specific fields within your templates. Um, saving you a ton of time during the contract generation process. Another thing that we recommend doing is co-authoring. Uh, that's going back to the collaboration suite. Uh, you know, if you can have multiple people in a document at one time on a call, that's fantastic because then you can make the changes you need to be making. You can see what changes they're making, what changes uh, they can see what changes you're making. Um, and you can do all of that in real time on a call as opposed to typing things up in a Word document or a, you know, a Google sheet or something and then sending it over to them and then getting it back and forth and back and forth. Um, another thing that you really should do is create approval work forms. Uh, not forms, workflows. So essentially something happens, someone create, generates a contract and then um, they fire the workflow for it to go on to the next person. So instead of having to notify the next person in the process of the job and then just kind of sitting there being like, oh, okay, I got an email from Johnson. I don't know if I should read this, da, 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 da. It's okay, I have created this document. Um, the system has now said, okay, this goes on to the next person. It is assigned to them, they get a notification, and then you can set up the workflow to generate uh, notifications at specific dates. So like, hey, one day, two day, three day, four, three, you know, four days after getting that notification, you need to be looking at this. Um, another thing is to make full use of SharePoint's reporting suite. So you can generate any kind of report that you want from SharePoint data and then use that to guide your contract management process. Because while there's a lot of advice online how to handle contract management, the best way to inform what you're doing is to just use, is to just get in there and, and use the data that you have. Um, and then finally use integrations. Uh, specifically third-party tool integrations. One thing that we re really recommend doing is using e-signature. So you can set up like DocuSign, Adobe, so that instead of having to print out contracts, faxing, faxing them over back and forth, physical signatures, you can instead just sign it online, you're good to go, same day, perfect. Um, 
kind of taking a look at like how to get started with this. So what you need to be doing so that you can really start learning how. Uh, first of all, you want to, I mean, the best thing that you can really do is to play around in SharePoint. Um, go in there, start building with stuff. Um, you know, it's like Legos. Uh, you, you can build from a set or you can, but really the best way you, that you're going to build something that your organization needs is to either ask someone to build it for you or try to build it yourself. Um, another thing that I recommend doing is look up online tutorials. So for instance, here at Doc, we have multiple online tutorials. Like we have our SharePoint basic series. Um, if you, you can find that on our website, uh, we have our YouTube channel where we post tutorials uh, for SharePoint. So you can actually find um, specific things like how to build wiki sites, all of that. Um, we, I don't think we have anything specifically on contract management, but you can also find stuff like that on our blog. Uh, blog.mydoc365.com. We have a ton of different stuff on SharePoint and contract management and how the two combine and amplify. Uh, and then finally, like one of the best ways to really do it, like I was saying, is to just go to someone, hire someone to build it for you. Because um, like I was saying, it could take you anywhere from six months to a year to the, do this yourself, to test this, to get this going. So it's better to go with a proven provider. Um, like say, for instance, Doc365. Oh, hey, what? Uh, we do contract management. Yeah, um, we do work with a ton of different companies like, you know, Jack Straddle, Credit Union, Airbnb, uh, King's Hawaiian, uh, the bread company. Uh, yeah, we potentially, yeah, we do their contract management. Um, so if you want to find like a full list of that and everything, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to provide you with a you know, breakdown of who we work with by industry. But we work with a ton of different people on contract management in a variety of different industries with, uh, with companies of all different sizes, you know, ranging from, you know, 100, uh, you know, 100 employees, 100 users to, you know, over 10,000. Um, so, you know, what some of you have probably been waiting around on is actual doc contract management, our contract management system, what it does, you know, taking, you know, seeing it in action. Um, so one thing I would like to say is that we're not going to be doing a full, you know, complete in-depth look at this. It's going to be a top-down look. I'm going to show you a couple things, but if you want a real full view of this, I highly recommend signing up for a free demo, 30 to 45 minutes. There's no obligation. We're not gonna bombard you with emails. We're just gonna say, hey, this is our system. Uh, we'll personalize it for you, uh, address any concerns, issues, uh, major problems that might be going on in your contract management process. And then we'll figure out what we can do to help you uh, for an affordable price, not like a lot of these other companies who are gonna say, oh, hey, we can help you uh, for, all of your savings, all of your money? Yeah, no, not us. So taking a look at this. So one second, did not mean to click that, but sticking around on here. So this is doc contract management. Uh, normally it does load faster, but for some reason my internet provider has decided to <coughs> slow me down. Is it the constant upload? Who knows? So first of all, with our dashboard, the one thing that's going that should stand out to you is that this is a top down look of everything that's going on in your contract management system. This is an admin view. I should point that out. What people see on their dashboards will depend on their permissions and their roles within the contract management process. Because this is an admin account, we're seeing things on an admin level which is why we're seeing the number of contracts active within the system, the number of parties active within in the system. So who you're working with, um, how many of them are active, how many of them are inactive, uh, which contracts are set to expire and in how many days are they going to expire? As you can see, we have about four. Um, this allows you to, with this breakdown, this allows you to prioritize what you should be paying attention to. Not only that, you can see the number of contracts in each stage of the process. This is highly important because this can really inform what you need to be doing and when you need to be doing it and what you need to be paying attention to. And it can also be used to really inform your overall attitudes and practices towards contract management. Um, but finally, and this is the important one, this is a universal constant on, on everyone's dashboard, is your task list. 
Because this goes back to human error. Because even your rock stars, your best employees in the world, they can, they can make mistakes. They can be doing stellar work on one thing, on one project, in one area, but it's not due for another six months. And they've kind of let something that's due in two days fall by the wayside. And when that's pointed out to them, suddenly they have to scramble and the work that they're doing there just doesn't cut it compared to somewhere else. With this dashboard, with by having this here, by, by you know, displaying this front and center, it lets people know what they need to be doing and when they need to be doing it. So you can have a full prioritization of your contracts so that you're constantly working with what needs to be worked with as opposed to, you know, working with things that, you know, could be worked with down the line. So going on from here onto our request screen. So this shows the contracts that have been currently requested. So right now we have three in the system and it shows when they need to be approved by. Um, so what we're seeing right here is we can see, okay, what's the contract's name? Who requested it? What department is it for? Is it a vendor contract? Is it a customer contract? Basically the, the basic overview that you need to really you know, get a grasp on it. If you need to take a more in-depth look from the request screen, from the request screen, you can go directly to the contract itself. So one second, let me just hide my floating meeting controls. This is where you can see a full breakdown of the contract. Uh, so this right here is the contract number. So this, each contract in that is stored within the doc contract management system has a specific identification number attached to it. Um, that means everything that is attached to this contract is tied to this number, which allows you to sort through everything and track everything and keep everything distinct. So you might have multiple contracts with the same name, but you can differentiate them and you know keep them separate by their number if need be. Uh, you can see the party. You can also click straight over to that party itself. So if you have multiple contracts with a party, you can see the full breakdown over here um, under documents. We'll come back to here in a second though. So over here with this contract, you can see the full breakdown, company name, location, when it's effective, when it's going to expire, cost, all of this information is super important. Um, but going on here, you can also see a breakdown of important dates, which again, very important. Um, you can see a full um, breakdown of everything. So you can see the actual contract itself, any requested documents, communications between you and the other party and any addendums that have been um, you know, pinned to said contract. Um, basically, it's important to have that full breakdown for tracking purposes. Moving on, you can see any workflows that have been generated for said contract. Um, adding a workflow, firing it is super easy. Um, you can build templates within doc contract management. Uh, so instead of having to build out a custom workflow every time, play around with that, tinker with the worry that it might not fire properly. Instead, you can say, okay, well, these are the templates that we have. These are the workflows that we generally use. I need to use this one. I'm going to create it, plug in what I need to plug in and then fire. Um, that way you don't have to, you can escape human error creeping into your workflow process, which kind of defeats the purpose of having the workflows. So any way that you can, you can prevent what you can prevent your workflows from getting infected by your humanity, by your human error. You know, I, I, I don't have to really go into that. You can also see a breakdown of your obligations. This is super important. These are essentially your deliverables. These are what are important, when they're due, who is supposed to be working on them. This is important for tracking this information. This is important for figuring out what you need to be doing next. It's work prioritization um, and it's handed to you in a very easy to understand list. Moving on, you can see all of the associated contracts. So you might have, um, so right here, you just, here's the contract. Uh, right now it's in a draft. You can see when it's effective, when it expires, has it been renewed, when it was renewed from, 
and all of that is just important information to have. You can also see any notifications. So if someone has been, if a notification has been created for someone on a task, on a document, on anything, you can see it here and you can see why it was created. Um, again, uh, this is to basically say, I mean, this is compliance. This is, this is accountability. This is saying this person was supposed to be doing this. Well, they didn't. Okay, well, you know, here's what we can do from here. Um, any notes that have been created, um, this is important to track. So like if something happened, if you're not happy with something, if a conversation with the other party went sour, you can notate that here. And also you can see the history. Um, so any changes that have been made to the contract itself, which is important. I mean, you have to maintain compliance. You have to have an audit trail for these sorts of things, because if something does go wrong, if there is a breach of contract, you can pull this information and you could say, okay, well, we did fail here. So here's what we can do going forward to not do that. Or, hey, we did everything we were supposed to do. Um, if there are any issues with this, with this contract, if there are any problems, this is on you. This isn't on us. We're compliant. Uh, you know, so, and here kind of going back to the party screen. So this is anyone that you have a contract with. Um, so instead of having a contract by contract basis, it's party by party. And then by clicking through to the party, you can then see each contract you have with them. Um, you can also see a full breakdown of the tasks. So again, kind of just keeping people accountable for the work that they're doing. Cause again, you can see who it's assigned to scroll through, um, you know, when they're supposed to be doing it, what's the status, what contract is it assigned to, what type of obligation of it. All of that is just super important because if you're not tracking that information, if you're not keeping on top of that, if you're not managing your contracts, uh, you're, you're gonna run into those issues that I talked about earlier in this webinar. Um, you're going to run into that human error. You're going to run into people missing things. You're going to run into people not doing their work. Um, and then finally, the reporting. So with contract reporting, you can pull basically, at least using doc contract management, you can pull basically any combination of information from the system and generate reports from it. So you can talk, you can look at um, things on a contract by contract basis, any upcoming contracts, how your departments are doing. Um, with this, with this scorecard, uh, we didn't really touch on this, but if with your vendors and with your different parties, we've built out a scorecard system in here that you can use to track how happy and satisfied you are with the different parties that you're engaging in contracts with. Uh, with basically it's a record of what you want. So you can go to procurement when they're either renewing a contract or potentially going with another party, another organization. And you can say, hey, this is why we were not happy. This is what we want, um, which they can use to guide their search and potentially find you the effective tools that you want. So you can really refine your search. Um, but essentially with these reports, you can just pull really anything, all of the important information. So you can be keep being track of your contract management process in real time. Um, or you can also schedule these so that they pop in quarterly, monthly, weekly, whatever. But basically with doc contract management, you, no one in your organization has an excuse for engaging in poor contract management. There is that accountability. There is that sense of, of prioritization. And it's just getting rid of that human error, which is super important, all important. And the more you can get rid of that, the more that you can automate this process, the better. So going back to the PowerPoint, um, again, if you want to you know, learn more, if you wanna see more, if you want to see a personalized demonstration of doc contract management, I highly recommend uh, you know, scheduling a demo. 30 to 45 minutes, just a quick conversation with one of our representatives. Um, we'd love to talk to you and um, engage with you, um, figure out what doc contract management can do for your organization and how it can help you resolve any issues that you're having, overcome pain points, and really just help your organization take what you're doing to the next level. Um, at this time, I don't see any questions. However, if anyone has any questions uh, about you know, contract management, SharePoint contract management, or just doc contract management in general, uh, feel free to ask right now in the chat. Um, 
Otherwise, I do have one thing to say before I let you guys go. Uh, we have just recently launched uh, SafePoint. SafePoint is our comprehensive uh, system designed to help companies revamp their approach to safety, quality, compliance, risk management, policy and procedure management, um, all of that and more. Basically, we, we wanna help you keep your employees safe because I know a lot of companies are looking at returning back to the workplace um, and they're trying to really navigate that and make sure their employees don't get sick, um, revamp how they do things so that you know they don't have to risk people getting sick, people getting hurt. So if you are interested in SafePoint, again, Feel free to reach out to us, schedule a free demo. We'd love to show it off to you. Um, so just communication with us in general, you can send us physical mail at 5011 Gate Parkway, Building 100, Suite 100, Jacksonville, Florida, 32256. Um, our phone number is 904-309-9970. If you would like to schedule a demo or ask any questions, feel free to reach us out to us at info at mydoc365.com or at... Uh, or reach out to me personally at qrussell at mydoc365.com. If you would like to schedule a product demo that can take place at any time during business hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, completely open, um, super flexible. We work with you. You don't have to really try to you know, cram things in. We try to work at your schedule. If you do need to do a uh, demo outside of those hours, we would also uh, love to accommodate you with that. So if there are no other questions, uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming out. This has been Quentin Russell with MyDoc365, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.